Hello, my name is Ashley Bobble, and I'm going to show you how to use your daily agenda. Now, you can use this in PowerPoint or you can use it in Google Slides. You can also use it as a tool for teaching on Zoom or you can project it in your classroom. So, though it looks busy right now, when you go to present, it looks way less busy. So, if you were presenting this on Zoom, or on your classroom projector, this is what the students would see. A clear daily schedule, one, two, three, four. You will have your standards here, and, they'll, and you'll have your digital classroom here. If they are working online, they'll be able to click things in the classroom. So now let's go back. The things I'm going to show you will work with Google Slides or in PowerPoint. I'm going to show you in PowerPoint first, but it just it will work the same exact way in Google Slides. So everything you see here is editable. You can change anything you like. You can change the colors. I have multiple colors for you, all with different themes, but I also have a gray scale to where you can make it any color that you wish. You can edit all the text. You can decide how you want to use the standards. For example, this week at a glance, you would drag the standards over that you plan to cover this week. And let's say you have three reading fiction standards, but no nonfiction. That would tell you, I need to add some informational text this week. Okay, I want to show you how the standards work. They are in the margins of the document, and they'll be in the margins of the document on Google Slides as well. They are labeled reading standards, speaking and listening, writing, and language. If you have different standards, you can obviously just edit those to fit whatever um, your standards are. Now, you can see that they are laid out a little bit differently, and they are color-coded. So, for example, the pink here are the reading literature standards, and the teal are reading informational text. So, that can help you see how many standards you are getting for each uh, of these. But these down here are laid out a little bit funky. These are linear and these are a little bit different and so are those. That's because when you zoom in, you can tell, and you'll we'll need to zoom in to be able to read them, <laughs> but when you zoom in, you can tell the writing standards have subsections under them. So this is writing standard 11.12.1, and then 1A, 1B, 1C and so forth. So these standards correspond with the one up above. Um, and I did that over here for language as well. But it's up to you to determine how you want to lay your standards out. Um, they just will need to be in the margin so that they can be moved over. In order to edit your standards, all you are going to do is to go find your standards. So maybe you teach sixth grade and you are just going to copy and you come over here and you're going to paste it in with the keep text only and that's going to keep um, the same font and the same size now just for simplicity's sake and to give me some more room I took out that part on all of them so that I could make my font a little bit bigger in some places and so that the standards would fit in those little boxes. You can leave yours if yours fit in there. It's just up to you. You can edit these however you wish. Also, you have two templates for how you can display your standards. So when you go to write your daily schedule out, whatever it looks like, you can write it out there. You can link to the tools um, here. If you're in class, you might just be handing out the tools, but you can link to the tools there and then you can drag your standards. So let's say you just focus on one standard a day. You would just move that to the middle. You would take out that other tool. You would take out that other tool. You can stretch that over. You're just going to be using one tool to focus on one standard and you can take all of this stuff away just like that. So then students would clearly see that they have one assignment that's going to cover one standard and they will have met that standard if they can do this. You might have three tools for the day. They might be watching a video, doing a worksheet, and then doing a collaboration. So 
if you have three tools, you just move the third like this, and then you pull in your standards that you are going to use. Okay, so now you see that with each day, these are going to be different, the standards are going to be different, so you're going to want to make sure that you always leave a blank, pretty template for you to work off of each day. So you want to make sure that this is blank here and everything like that. Um, but when you do that, all you need to do to make your blank templates is just hit duplicate and that's just going to duplicate that blank template and it'll have all the standards there with it. I also have a completely blank template included for you so that you can put whatever you want to put in that. All I did to make these was just go to insert shapes and I just put shapes how I wanted them to look. You can go to the eyedropper tool if you want to use my colors and make sure that the colors all match. So I just went to insert, shape, and then shape fill, eyedropper. I picked up on that color and I took the outline away. So that might be a daily slide that you use or once a week, like a check-in, like a Friday check-in, just whatever. That's just a blank template for you and that's how you can get the colors off of this onto anything that you want to make. Remember that every single bit of this is editable and you can make it exactly how you want. Now, whenever you get it ready, you're going to put it into your Google Classroom if you have Google Classroom or if you have Microsoft, you're just going to upload into the online PowerPoint and it will look like this, just online PowerPoint to send it to st students so they can view and not edit, but view. You're just going to grab that link. Anyone with the link can view. And the same thing in Google. You are going to share it to where students can view it, but not edit it. And when you do that, they'll be able to click on the stuff that's clickable. So for example, I put an aquarium in here, and that takes you to an online uh, aquarium timer. So if you were teaching online, and you wanted to set a timer for how long they needed to work on something, you could set that timer and you could just get to it by clicking on that. You can put your photo here. When they click on it, it'll tell a little bit about your family maybe. Here's an online library I link to. The possibilities are truly endless. You can link anything you want to link to these images. For example, if you want them to watch a video for the day, you just get the video and then you go to link and you paste the link. I put a yoga mat here so if you wanted it to do so if you wanted students to do a 10 minute stretching routine you could link to a stretching routine. You can change anything you want to change. Now for those who already know how to make your digital classrooms that is this is basically all the video you need to see these standards are draggable just like that and that makes it super fast and easy for displaying your standards. You can link to other slides. This is up to you. But for those who need help making a digital classroom, I'm going to show you that next. Alright, so for those who do not have a digital classroom already, all it is is just this make-believe type classroom that looks homey and real and you can put any sort of elements you want to in there. For the items to be clickable, they have to be layered on top of the image. So back to this, if you were to save this one as just an image, just like it is, none of these things would be clickable. But if you save this as the image and then layer this stuff on, that is what makes it clickable. So, once you have your picture set, you can put whatever uh, scene you want to put in there. You can move the window back, all that. Once you have that set, you're going to go to File, Save As, and you can do a JPEG or a PNG. JPEG is going to ping. A ping image has a much better quality, but it makes the file larger, and a JPEG makes it smaller. So that's just up to you. You might not even be able to notice the difference, but either one of those will work. Once you get that image, you then go back to whether you have Google Slides or PowerPoint. 
and you just put the image in there. All right. And then you are going to start layering in the stuff. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's say, let's say you want to use this desk. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go to remove BG. I'm going to paste it. And that's going to take the background out for me. So then I'm going to copy it, go back to my classroom, paste it in. And now I could link this. I could go to insert, link, and I could put a link to anything that I wanted to with that desk, such as teacher help. Like, you know, when students come to your desk for help, teacher help and have like a Q&A linked page there or something. Um, the possibilities are truly endless with what you want to put in your classroom. Once you learn the art and the genius of layering, it helps a ton. All right, so I hope that you um, enjoy your themes. You have a mountain theme, a desert theme, a Paris theme. Woohoo, Paris! When we can't travel right now, we can dream. <laughs> Remember, you can change all the images and you have an old library theme. You can even dress these up for um, holidays or whatever. You can put your own posters in there, but I also gave you a gray scale um, for you to change any of the colors that you want to change. All right, I hope you enjoy this and I hope it saves you a ton of time. Remember, you can use it directly in PowerPoint, PowerPoint Online, or Google Classroom. Thank you. Bye.